I am Iron Man. You just don't know when to give up, do you? I'm gonna do this all day. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. You've got to do better. Bruh. Nerderotic.com. I don't think there's ever been more synergy between the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Marvel Comics, and that is incredibly bad news. And I think it's high time somebody called out Kevin Feige, so here we go. Now, it's been a while since I've mentioned this, but you might not know that I used to own a comic shop in San Francisco for over a decade, one best of the bay, called the Comic Outpost. And I remember it like it was yesterday, the day Disney bought Marvel, the day Marvel died. I had my staff there, we did a podcast, and we all pretty much agreed that the movies would be great, but the comics would suffer. Now, we're sitting here over a decade later, and we were right, but... I didn't think the movies would suffer this quickly. Now, I don't know where this started. It could have been with the fandom or it could have been with Kevin Feige's handlers. There's been this myth built up around him that he's one of us, that he was a big Marvel fanboy who read the comics when he was a kid. You were already invested in Marvel comics. I knew these types of characters. I didn't know as much as I know now. And the Marvel source material, which I knew some of when I was a kid, I had the pajamas, I had the toys, I watched the cartoons. But as I started to read more of the comics, I went, look, let's just do this. So the myth of Kevin Feige being a big Marvel fanboy is just that, a myth. He had some pajamas, he owned some toys, he watched some cartoons, but he didn't really read the comic books. And that's kind of important considering that is the source material now he read them later and source material did matter in the beginning of the marvel cinematic universe but it doesn't matter now kevin feige says comic book popularity not a factor in movie and tv adaptations and that is absolutely clear now Marvel was once known as the house of ideas but now it's the house of ideology and it's a house run by kevin feige who has gone full Kathleen Kennedy and quite frankly with all the criticism that I've thrown Kathleen Kennedy's way much deserved Kevin Feige has been much worse the stuff that has flown out of that guy's pie hole just in the last couple of months is worse than anything Kathleen Kennedy has said recently which has been absolutely nothing he recently said Doctor Strange was just another white guy, and he also said he wanted to subvert our expectations with Black Widow. Well, you mean subverting our expectations like you did with Ghost? Or subverting our expectations like you did with Female Loki? Or subverting our expectations like you did with Freckle Jesus? And this is a bonus round, and I know it's not Marvel. Or Disney subverting our expectations with Infest Nest? You want to subvert my expectations with Black Widow? Why don't you make the Taskmaster Anthony Masters like he is in the comic books and not the girl that I know and everyone knows we're going to get? You want to subvert my expectations? Have Loki actually be the star of his own show. You want to subvert my expectations? Cast a comic book accurate Fantastic Four and X-Men and Let's go one further. Actually call them the X-Men. It's funny that people call it the X-Men. There's a lot of female, um, of female superheroes in that X-Men group, so I think it's outdated. And about that synergy between Marvel Comics and the MCU, well, like I said, it has never been closer. In the past, you would have a Captain America movie out, and it would be Falcon Cap in the comics, or a Thor movie out, and it would be female Thor in the comics. They never really matched, and they wasted years doing that, and that probably could have helped the comic shops. But now... They couldn't be closer. I absolutely believe that She-Hulk will look like a dude in the She-Hulk series. And the winter She-Hulk has something to do with the Red Room, which connects it to Black Widow. These are all things Kevin Feige has signed off on because he is the CEO of Marvel Comics. He also signed off on this. This story broke over the 4th of July weekend. Marvel reveals Steve Rogers no longer believes in the American dream in first issue of the United States of Captain America. I'm loyal to nothing except the dream. I actually said that once. Here's the thing about a dream, though. 
a dream isn't real. When we wake up, it goes away, and we're left with this yearning inside, like something was taken from us. At least, that's one kind of dream. But lately, spending my days in this country as the years march on by, I'm starting to think America actually has two dreams and one lie. I know, Captain America sounds like he just walked out of a cis-hetero anatonormativity social injustice course. Germans have this neat word, Fernweh. It means a longing for nostalgia, for a place you've never been, or for a place that might not even exist at all. We have a word for this in the States, Americana. You've got to be f***ing kidding that's funny. Captain America sounds exactly like a bitter, ingrate, current-year Marvel comic books writer. Now, I'm not saying Kevin Feige runs the day-to-day -day at Marvel Comics or even knows what goes on on a weekly basis, but I'm sure he knows that they're writing something like this in Captain America. You know, the Steve Rogers Captain America that they had to bring back to the book because the Falcon Cap wasn't selling? Or maybe they just brought him back to deconstruct him more so maybe someday Falcon Cap will work. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. You've got to do better. So it seems like the ingratitude that is ingrained into the Marvel Comics staff has bled up to the MCU because the ingratitude continues and it also seems that Kevin Feige has gone to the Tim Miller School of Film Promotion. Just in case you don't remember, a couple of years ago at Comic-Con, Tim Miller said that Terminator Dark Fate was going to scare the F out of misogynists. Then, after the film flopped, he said this. So, I'm proud of the movie and it's just bad luck or bad timing or hubris on my part by thinking that I've got my finger on the pulse of fans, uh, nerds everywhere, and maybe I don't. We see article after article. This is going to be Me Too Black Widow. This is going to be a Black Widow film about the persecution of women. Wow, that sounds fun. Can't wait to take baby boy to that. Wasn't that long ago. Kevin Feige could do no wrong, but it looks like his best days might be behind him. And hey, if the MCU ends today, you cannot take away what the man has accomplished. It's the greatest franchise ever created. And as of yet, he has not had a failure, but based on what I've seen so far and we haven't seen any real numbers from any of the D-plus shows, it's not looking too good this year. And it was only a couple of years ago when Scarlett Johansson was calling out PC culture in Hollywood. I did a video on that, but since then, it seems both Scarlett and Kevin Feige have gone to Bohemian Grove, done their mock sacrifice to Moloch, and joined the cult. Black Widow star Scarlett Johansson claims women are undermined, underserviced, underappreciated, and underpaid and ungrateful. So says the multi-millionaire adult pretender. So we are well on our way into the MCU and a couple of hours away from the beginning of Marvel Phase 4. Disney Marvel thinks they've built up enough capital to start messing with their product and pushing the boundaries by using them as vehicles and platforms for social awareness and representation when you can do both with good storytelling as long as that comes first. With all the boxes they concern themselves with checking, they keep missing the main one. Fun. But to hell with all that, the Black Widow and Loki both passed the Bechdel test. What's the Bechdel test? The Bechdel test, also known as the Bechdel-Wallace test, is a measure of the representation of women in fiction. It asks whether a work features at least two women who talk to each other about something other than a man. The requirement that the two women must be named is sometimes added. According to the user edited databases and the media industry press, about half of all films meet this criteria. Media industry studies indicate the films that pass the test perform better financially than those that do not. Strangely enough, there isn't a link to any information to back that statement up, but I am sure they base it on films like Captain Marvel, and they think it's actually a successful film because of the Bechdel test and not because it was sandwiched in between two of the most anticipated sequels of all time. So Kevin Feige has sold us out. He got what he wanted out of the real comic book fans. We are no longer necessary. Now this is normie nip and they think the best way to the normies is through representation and 
social awareness. There's two kinds of movies, virtue signalers yeah. and superhero movies. Mm -hmm. Well, as usual, you're wrong, Bill. Now there's virtue signaling superhero films. Now, obviously, Marvel, Disney, Hollywood doesn't give a crap about your cause or your community. And thankfully, more and more of you are waking up to this every single day, waking up to the fact that you are simply being used as a shield from criticism and a giant distraction because they do business with a regime that commits human rights atrocities. And I'm sure Kevin Feige might know about a few of those. Now, fortunately for us and unfortunately for Hollywood, they are so disconnected from the general public, they haven't realized yet that the normies don't want this. They are tired of this. We all just want to have fun at the movies, but they'll find out eventually. Hollywood has had a break from the blockbuster. They have lost billions of dollars, but they have also had a break from the flop. And once they have a few, that's when things will change. And the MCU hasn't had one yet, and they are due. And potentially, they could have a couple this year. In my last Marvel video, I said it's going to get much, much worse before it gets better because you can't turn these things on a dime. That's why we're getting America Chavez, Female Thor, Ironheart, and Miss Marvel before we see Moondragon, Crystal, the Son of Satan, Ghost Rider, Adam Warlock, the Fantastic Four, or the X-Men. But there's no guarantee things are going to get better, but we are guaranteed for at least a year of the MCU, possibly more. Black Widow is on track to make $140 million worldwide, which was probably the original projection for the states. Obviously, we are living in a coof world right now, and Disney Marvel will be able to spin that in a positive direction, but I'm guessing next week is where it's really going to hurt them. And this very well could be Marvel's worst year, but somehow Kevin Feige will be able to avoid any criticism, although he deserves just as much as Kathleen Kennedy. It's... It's kind of sad that we have to tear it down. Maybe Kevin Feige was at one time a nerd of the people, but now he's just another Hollywood producer. On the outside chance someone from Marvel or DC is actually listening to this video, a quick story as we close things out. My youngest son, Nerd Roddick Jr., was raised in a comic shop from the time he was months old to the time I sold it. He was in that shop virtually every single day. Obviously, he is a giant comic book fan and a huge Marvel fan. We're about to see Black Widow, and he doesn't want to go. He's actually pretty bent out of shape, but he's going to have to take one for the team because I'm not going alone. Think about that just for a second. Your target audience, a 15-year-old boy, does not want to see a Marvel film. Let that sink in. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I'll see you in the next video. Nerdgerotic.com. Please subscribe.